another one who's also in a spot of bother is uh, playing on court Philippe Chartrier and I'm referring to Roger Federer he lost the first set in a tiebreaker. it was an extraordinary first set uh, he lost the first three games then bounced back to take the next four and uh, then faltered after looking to be in control then lost the tie break so uh, he is certainly having uh, his work cut out on court Philippe Chartrier that is where the action is going to be coming your way and uh, joining John Alexander will be uh, one of the voices of the sport and it's lovely to welcome him back to uh, the world feed and I'm speaking of the great man John Barrett he'll be with you shortly there is Roger Federer the number five seed and he is in big trouble down seven six and a five two to the Peruvian Louis Horner who has just been thoroughly outplaying Roger who comes into this event as one of the hot favorites as he was last year only to be beaten in the opening round serving for the second set two set to love lee are you surprised well john uh, nothing surprises me anymore particularly with roger federer who can be the very best player in the world at times and at others almost the worst practiced on this court uh, yeah, earlier yeah, yeah. in the day before the matches began and it was slightly a lethargic looking practice session I don't know whether he's just underestimated his opponent who finished last year at 127 in the world as opposed to Rogers six ranking in the world it's quite a, a gap between the two This is Get versus on. favorite surface clay. He's from Lima, Peru. Oh. So this really would be a tremendous surprise if Federer were to go out here much too early to suggest that that is likely but the two sets to love lead on clay takes a bit of recovering now set point for two set to love lead another unforced error from roger federer who is yet to dig in And there it goes. Horner can hardly believe that he has won the first two sets from Roger Federer, the number five C, but he has seven six, six two. Well, John, the surprise factor here is considerable, although Luis Horner here, as you've said, a Peruvian, knows all about playing on clay and he reached the quarterfinal in Buenos Aires earlier this year beating Lepenti on the way losing to Moya just 7-5 in the final set looking here now at the stats 65% of his first serves in Federer rather too low at 57 and uh, the unforced errors have been the cause of his misery chiefly and he's a boy who likes to go for his shots as we know and can make the most spectacular winners but uh, too many losers. This is Lewis's only his second Grand Slam event. He played in the US Open in uh, 2002. Lost in the first round. Lost in the first round of the Australian Championships this oh, year yes. to Vicente. So he's rather inexperienced at this level. And uh, 
six grand slams are played over five sets he wouldn't be the most experienced player over five sets but uh, at two set to love up and with Roger Federer in this mood oh, it looks like a good thing so the muted applause for Luis Horner and Roger Federer as they resume battle with Federer trailing two sets to love and everything hanging on a good start here in the third set. And John, I thought when Federer recovered from love three in the first set that we began to see something happen from him, but failing on the one set point he had at 6-5 in the tiebreak, I think, was his undoing. He looked very miffed, going down 8-6 in the tiebreak. Roger Federer came into last year's event as a favourite, having won the German Open, but went out in the first round to Hisham Marazzi. Oh, Three straight sets. Yes, and he just um, come from winning Hamburg too, which was a major surprise. Not winning Hamburg, that was no surprise because he played quite beautifully there, but the surprise was to lose here, as you say, to Arazi in straight sets, 6-4, the third, the best he did. 3, 2 and 4 it was last year. So, unhappy memories in Paris. This looks like a better start. He has been a quarter-finalist here in 2001. Yes. That's right, he lost to Carreccia that year. And the same man, the Spaniard, had beaten him the year before in the fourth round. So the Spaniards excel, of course, on clay. All the more reason to have Wimbledon, eh, John? Well, convincing enough game to start this third set, but we need a few more of those if he's going to turn this match around. Audacious move, sir, volleying on the second ball. But you mentioned Wimbledon because he was a quarter finalist there the other year. Beat uh, Pete Sampras famously and lost to Henman. Uh, Horner, love one, as Federer prepares to try and break. I think one of the troubles with Federer, he played an awful lot of tennis around the time of Munich and Rome. He won Munich, went straight to Rome, got to the final there and lost, surprisingly, to Mantia. And then went to Hamburg on the crest of a wave, really, with that wonderful run on clay behind him. It lost to Philippoussis in the third round there. 
And at that stage was 38.8 for the year to come here. That is his present performance. So it's been a wonderful year for him. But this very disappointing. Yes. And sometimes I think they burn themselves out. They play too much. You only have to look at the list of injuries. Ten of the top hundred men couldn't play here because they were injured. Oh, the top two players certainly haven't overplayed this year, Leighton Hewitt and Andre Agassi. And they may be uh, smart. Pacing themselves. Well, there's no doubt that uh, both of them are very, very smart. Andre Agassi, a wily competitor. Mm -hmm. Sets himself for the majors. We'll be seeing him in action later against Carol Beck of Slovakia. Sure, no. No. And uh, another unforced error to no avail. He's not grafting yet, is he? He's not digging in. And that's what you look to see in a great player, which is the question mark I have about Federer. Brilliant, but... At times he has competed very well, but there are just too many times where he doesn't seem to be able to find his best when things aren't travelling well. Just, uh, the feeling I have is that he's underestimated his opponent a little bit and he just really doesn't want to be seen to having to having to have to fight really hard to win. He's still just a little on the casual side. <coughs> well, they'd only played once before and that was on a hard court when Federer won readily enough and one probably would have expected that on hard, but uh, here on clay, Horner getting too many back. But you're probably right, because that win was uh, in Miami this oh, year. Nice. So he has this recent win over him, and you think you're going to do it again? Lewis is just uh, the antithesis at the moment of uh, Roger Federer. He is chasing everything. He's playing every point. As if his very life depended on it, he's really competing. The biggest win of his career. Now we'll play. On one of the stages that he would have only dreamt of playing on. He's not really a regular on the Go centre on, court. Yes. First match on the centre court. Je Better holds. Leads 2 1. He is down. Two sets to love. And the blue skies above have warmed the hearts as well as the bodies of the players, I think, because it was very gloomy here yesterday and cold. Yes, as it was on Saturday. Last day of the qualifying, play was stopped several times, conditions were heavy and most unpleasant. Yeah. Mistake from Lewis, he doesn't want to give easy points to Roger. He wants to keep the pressure on, make Roger fight every inch of the way. Right on the line. Beautiful combination of shots. Lewis has circled the mark, asking the umpire to come down and check it. It did appear to hit the line. Cedric Murray there saying, out. Signaled it wide. Well, how did you see it? Well, from this distance, uh, I can make an error, but it did seem to hit the edge of the line. But the mark said something different. 
Roger accepts the call. Beautiful touch. No forehand volley. Federer was coming in. There wasn't much room for error. Tonkins. No signs of Horner tightening up at this moment. This commanding lead over the fifth seed. Well, I think Federer won the point twice. The ball was just wide, I think. So here comes Cedric again. Just to decide whether, in fact, it is. Yes, it was out. So the little half-volley drop shot that was a very casual shot from Federer. Unnecessary. So 40-30. Go on, Tont. And another error from Feather on return of serve. It's been the story of the day. Very sad. But they're, they're needless errors. It's not like that ball was going to be a winner had it gone in. He's just playing careless, not very prudent tennis. And there is a penalty for lack of prudency, especially on the surface. balls two games all third set yeah. marvelously talented angle volley makes it look so easy Approach shot wasn't anything to write home about. It was inside the service line. Beautiful move to the net, angling the racket. Okay, not moving to the bounce of the ball, just taking a swipe on the half volley and paying the price. Oh, brilliant. Good try by Horner, but what a volley. Overhead, a backhand smash. From Federer. Tonkins. Beautifully done. Well, the up, keeping up the pressure and moving ahead three two in the Third set. On court two, let's just see the closing stage of the match between Rainer Schutter, the number 11 seed, and Cecile Mamit of the United States, playing each other for the first time today. Match point for Schutler. He finishes it in style. So, an ace to finish and Schutler safely through to the second round. 
been healed by either Jean-René Lisna or Mariano Delfino, France or Argentina. The finalist in Australia is through to the second round. And still the lovely weather over the southwest corner of Paris. Well, it looks as if Federer has decided he must work a little bit harder. He's trying to vary things a little and trying to cut down his unforced errors. It's Horner, two sets to love and two three. Beautiful play, wasn't it? And Lewis heavily backspun drop shot. Federer doing well just to pick it up. Tried the cheeky one across court, but Lewis is there and is just as cheeky on the way back. Federer coming up with a lovely angled backhand volley from just off the ground. Go wants to see a little bit more effort from Federer here, really, to tramp along the rallies a bit and work his man about. Rather cavalier attitude at the moment. Beautiful sure measured enough. play from Horner. He's staying calm. Well, if that was meant to be a chip and charge, it wasn't a very good one. No, there's more... Uh, Hit and hope, but he has more hope than head. <laughs> Beautiful controlled angle from Horner. Nothing more than what was necessary. He's staying calm. Big moment for the young Peruvian. 22 years of age. Roger still just 21. Got him. Is he trying? Well, drop shot from uh, around the baseline. Yeah, so. Show a lot of spirit. A shot of a player that's not really uh, committed to the fight back yet. Oh! 
40. That's the sort of cavalier shot I was talking about just now that is hard to understand in the circumstances of the score. Horner coming to Federer's rescue with an error to give him a hold and a 4-3 lead. Well, one has seen this boy ever since junior days developing wonderfully well from promise to fulfilment in the sense that he's already fifth in the entry computer rankings the highest he's been and at number two in the race as a result of winning three tournaments this year only Agassi has won more four but this man is testing him all the way because he is grafting he's working every point and Federer isn't yeah, that's the uh, difference and it's so apparent to see exemplified by that attempted drop shot in the last game when uh, he really should be battening down the hatches and showing his opponent that he's going to dig in and fight and he hasn't just quite made his mind up it appears at this point oh, well you're looking at a man who is number two in the race five in the world in the rankings as a result of Winning three tournaments in Marseille, in Dubai, and in Munich on clay on this surface. Finalist in Rome, one of the Masters Series events. But he's being very cavalier about the way he's approaching this match. He's hitting himself to defeat Horner. 3-4 in this third set, but two sets to love. That's the shot that's done so much damage for yeah, Horner. Just explosive power off the forehand. Heavy top spin. Maybe getting a little bit too cute there. Played drop shot, but he allowed Federer into the net. It's always got to be low percentage tennis to have to make a topspin lob to win the point. Well, here's some opportunity for Roger Federer at 30 all. Enormous Go first serve. 194 right on the center line. Person Lewis, just five feet eleven or one point eight meters, seventy four kilograms. Well, the only thing is, he might start to get a little bit tight here with the prospect of this scalp in his sights it would be an amazing performance if he were to complete the win
First error oh, from no. Roger, just not moving back to the bounce of the ball. He's remaining a little flat-footed. Not willing to put in the extra effort. Well, now the pressure is really on for Federer. A must-win game. And we'll see how he responds. He's looking casual and relaxed, which in a sense is good, but is he really working? We'll find out. Hard to read. Well, that's been the story of the day. Even when he tried to do something different, often as not. Horner has found the perfect answer, forcing the error. Got another serve and volley attempt there. That's good to see that he's prepared to change up. Well, the attempt at a drop shot there failed miserably, so for the moment Federer is safe. He's 5-4, but two sets to love down. There are some shouts from the spectators urging Federer here to get the break of serve he so urgently needs to try and take this third set. It's Horner 4-5. Insisting that the mark be looked at, he's pretty confident it's going to be called long. Yes, it is long. Cedric Murier. No reaction whatsoever from Roger Federer. We'll see just how cool he stays at one of the most important moments of his career. Oh. And Pedro is still too generous today. up a little having Federer back to 30 all and brings him within two points of securing this third set well he's found it difficult to control the ball too often they've flown long just like that last one
point from Federer. He doesn't like it. It's five all. Solid tennis from Horner. <coughs> John, I think one of the problems for Federer today is that the ball in use here, the Roland Garros ball, is a little bit faster and smaller than the ball they've been using on the tour, the pen ball. And I think his control, therefore, is very uh, sketchy today. Nothing wrong with that control. Beautiful move there. Stop backhand volley. Nice knee backspun. High risk shot again from Roger. Tonkins. tennis from Horner. It's almost like he can see the victory in sight. He's going for it. This backhand just missing. forehand from just inside the baseline incredible racket head speed ripping through the ball legs driving and Federer risky second serve into the forehand and serve volley stuck with the ball right at his feet this is just extraordinary. I think, John, we often say that a point, one point, can turn a whole match. I think that set point he had in the first set, 6-5 in the tiebreak, was it. He won that set r fairly routinely after being down Love 3. I think he might well have been on victory course. Oh. Now everything going against him, the close calls. Critical stage. Avantage Federer. So there it is, Federer holding on just, he's 6-5, but two sets to love down. Well, just to bring you up to date with what's been happening elsewhere, Mariano Puerta of Argentina has beaten Justin Gimmelstall of the United States, 6-1 in the fourth set. Jean-René Lisnard of France, 6-4 in the fourth against Delfino of Argentina. John van Lottem of the Netherlands, good win there, 6-4 in the fifth against the Belgian Dick Norman, the tallest man, I think, in the tournament. Two women's results for you. Kostanic of Croatia has beaten Lefebvre of France, 6-4 in the third. And Randrian Tefi of Madeira has beaten Alexandra Stevens at an upset there. The number 27 seed from America gone, 6-3. 6-3, Madagascar, excuse me. Oh, please.
so the opportunity to uh, take this into a tie break looming for Horner he did well enough in the first set in the tie break he'll be dreaming of repeating here as he serves at 5-6 against a still inexplicably poor Federer Well, he saw Federer out of the corner of his eye, closing in fast on his second serve. That led to the double fold, a forced error. Ah, good crowning tactics there from Federer. So just the glimmer of hope for the Swiss number one. Insisting on trying to take the ball early, even though the top spin is making it kick and move all around, and that's creating a lot of those unforced errors. Went for six all. Well, highly commendable tennis from Luis Horner there having to make his shot right here si je as Federer je comes in rather too late and is passed clean as a whistle well who's your money on in the tiebreak Now you're going to tell me Horner, aren't you? Well, he's looking like a hard thing to beat at the moment. But Federer is hanging in. Not all that convincing, but he's still there. Well, 70% of the time that the... 70% uh, of the time, the player who wins the first point of a tiebreak wins the tiebreak. He's just broken. We'll see if it goes through this time. And again, Federer just not satisfied to get the difficult ones back into play. Trying for more than what's appropriate. And a very welcome ace hasn't served particularly well today I'm afraid Three, two. Oh, no. unforced error just a very makeable forehand from on the baseline and real pressure Horner has the lead, the mini break, 3-2.
Oh, no. Backhand not appearing to be full hearted. He's finding it difficult with that kick serve up high. He's not controlling the ball. I think it is something to do with the balls flying as against the ones they've been using on the tour. The pen ball's a little bit heavier than this. And also in the last couple of days it's been sort of damp here and heavy conditions and today it's much uh, brighter, sunnier, warmer. The ball is flying a little bit more. Courts are fully dried out. But let's take nothing away from Horner who's playing with the same tennis ball. Maybe just a little bit of tightness there for Lewis. Can you believe it? Well, oh, no. when you think he might be getting back into it, he comes up with the double fault. His fourth of the day, and Horner at 5-3 within reach now of a sensational upset. it now he thinks enormous forehand ripped down the line and now three match points for Warner beautiful footwork there just giving himself space for the winning forehand three match points that's it So the biggest sensation on day one as the number five seed bites the red dust here in Roland Garros, Luis Horner in straight sets has played quite beautifully and allowed Federer to hit himself to defeat. And once again, a disappointing performance from the Swiss number one, Arazi last year in round one corner this year in round one yes he's provided the two biggest upsets of the opening day the last two years in a row unfortunately he is the one that's out first round two years in a row and he's got lots to think about as he leaves the court and I'm sure that Peter Lundgren his coach will have a lot to say about his performance today or lack of thereof and for Horner, well, an absolute joy to see somebody at the age of 22 and ranked 88th in the world score such a fine win. So there it is. The straight sets win. 7-6, 6-2, 7-6.